Welcome back everybody. Today I'm doing something new. Obviously this isn't State of Decay 2. Uh, this is Sudoku. This is a Sudoku puzzle that I crafted. And I'm going to be talking about uh, my inspiration and how I went about setting it and how you could go about solving the puzzle. Uh, if that sounds interesting to you, obviously keep watching. If not, it's fine. I know this is very different than what I usually post, so I'm not expecting a lot of my you know, usual watchers to be um, into this kind of stuff, but that's cool. Anyway, uh, so I've been doing Sudoku uh, quite a bit for about two years now since I discovered the Cracking the Cryptic uh, YouTube channel. Simon and Mark, two British guys who solve a lot of wild Sudoku puzzles. Um, it's a lot of good fun and uh, a lot of, a lot, it's a pretty fun way to spend um, free time. Anyway, so like for the first year or so that I watched that I watched them, I had crafted, I don't know, a dozen or so puzzles. Uh, two of them were pretty good and actually got featured on Cracking the Cryptic uh, itself. Um, but since the second one was featured, I hadn't uh, set any more puzzles. I hadn't had any good ideas for puzzles. Um, and that kind of stayed that way for about a year until when two weeks ago I watched Simon solve, oops, when I watched Simon solve this puzzle, Hurricane by Sudoku Explorer. Uh, if you are into Sudoku, you might see some similarities between this one and mine. Um, that is definitely not necessarily intentional, but this puzzle was a heavy inspiration of mine. Uh, as soon as I watched it and watched Simon solve of it, uh, I really liked um, a few elements of the solve and um, kind of the theory behind it and how certain elements work together. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything about this solve or my solve now because some people might just be seeing these puzzles for the first time. So, you know, links down below if you want to try these puzzles or just watch Simon solve this puzzle. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but there's definitely some similarities similarities between my puzzle and this puzzle, um, both in, uh, yeah, in some small tricks. Uh, so anyway, I started kind of, I think it was either that night or the next day after watching that, watching that video, started to work on this. Um, it, took me a couple days working on this, uh, several hours of just kind of staring at it partially done or, you know, trying things, putting arrows in different spots, um, and just seeing how it kind of worked out. And then, um, eventually I made, you know, progress bit by bit and ended up with a puzzle that I'm very happy with. Uh, I'm going to go over the rules in a second, but if, again, if you're interested in trying any of these puzzles or watching, watching Simon solve of Hurricane, uh, the links will be down below. So it's normal Sudoku rules, uh, one through nine, um, with no repeats in the boxes, in the rows, and in the columns. Uh, that's just the normal Sudoku rules, of course. Then we have the arrow Sudoku variant. So uh, this is called an arrow. Uh, the uh, kind of tail of the arrow and the head of the arrow, or the bulb of the arrow. Uh, the tail of the arrow, the digits here sum up to whatever's in here. So let's say we figure out that this is a seven and we also figure out that this is a three. We would then immediately know that this would be a four because three plus four, of course, equals seven. Um, and then we have killer cages. This is another variant. These extra cages throughout the puzzle uh, and the digits inside the cages cannot repeat and they must add up to the uh, total in the upper left. So these digits are, whoops, I forgot that 17. Uh, the, these digits add up to 15. So again, if we found this was like one, two, and four, that adds up to seven. We need the total to be 15. So we would know it's eight, uh, to make, you know, 15. And what's really nice about this page is if you type in a wrong number, it'll immediately tell you, uh, or if you type in a number that breaks a constraint, it will immediately tell you that, you know, that digit's wrong. Um, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 9 equals 16. So it highlights all those to say, hey, you messed up. Similarly, if I typed a 2 down here, it would highlight both of these because you can't have two twos in the same column, of course. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's the basic rules plus killer Sudoku, which is the cages, and uh, arrow Sudoku. I do want to point out, I, I did say this, but on this puzzle, it does not matter. Digits in cages cannot repeat. So, um, yeah, and this puzzle doesn't matter at all since uh, they're all in the same box. 
But if you have a puzzle like Hurricane, where the uh, the cages go in through multiple boxes, you can look over here in um, row three, column five. That digit cannot be the same as, let's say, the digit way down here in um, row five, column seven. Since they're in the same cage, they cannot repeat. Um, that's a big element of Hurricane. Um, you know, not repeating. Basically, this is uh, nine cells, so it has all the digits one through nine there. So that's a that's a big part of the puzzle. My puzzle doesn't use that at all. Um, but just for the sake of making sure everyone understands the rules, I'm gonna I wanted to mention that. Now, uh, yeah. So go start those puzzles or watch the other video if you want to do that before you watch mine. That's fine. Uh, I'll just give you a second to do that. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about. With regards to my puzzle is I'm gonna hop over here to a, a blank puzzle is called set theory um, at least that's what I call it I don't know if that's the best name or not uh, there's a more famous at least kind of version of it or sp specific I guess instance of it called uh, Fist of Mephel's ring or the ring or I don't know what else to call it but basically the idea is that in every Sudoku puzzle these uh, corner cells have 16 digits in them, of course. There's there's 16 cells there. Whatever 16 digits are in those cells are repeated exactly in this inner ring. So if like one, two, three, and four, somewhere in this ring there will be a one, two, three, and four specifically allotting for these. Um, and we can go over how to do that, although that's a little bit more complicated than anything that I attempted to use in my puzzle. Um, but an easy way to look at it is, let's say we have, whoops, let's say, I guess this one, we have this column. This column has all the digits of one through nine. We don't know their positions, uh, but it could be, you know, wherever. Whoops. They could be wherever. Anyway, uh, yeah, we have no idea where they are, but we know they're all there. So let's say we have this row. Uh, this gray spot will be the overlap, but the kind of violet row has all the same cells as the green column uh, again we don't know what cells or what digits are in what cells but all the digits are there now if we remove this gray thing this gray cell from uh, both sets both green and from violet uh, they still have the exact same digits uh, this will have one through nine minus whatever was in the cell and this will have one through nine minus whatever is in that cell. Um, it seems kind of, I don't know, it seems kind of simple at this stage, but making sure you understand this level is more important for the next level. So I'm going to show you kind of what I did. Uh, let me make sure I get this right. Okay. So I did, instead of just one row, I did four rows vertically. And then I did, sorry, four columns vertically. That was a weird sentence. And then um, four rows. And this is exactly the same thing as with, as with the, just the one row and the one column. Uh, the green, four rows with four sets of one through nine. And the blue was uh, four sets of one through nine again. And these grays were the overlap. So if I just delete these grays, greens and blues still have the exact same digits in them. Uh, they're just uh, mixed up, of course. Now, what's very interesting about this is that this leaves us with a full set of 1 through 9 for blue. Uh, we know it's a full set because it fills up one box completely. Uh, we don't know about that for green. Well, we do know that the 1 through 9 is in green somewhere, but we don't know where it is like we do um, for uh, the gr like we do for the blues. So if we flip over here to the puzzle when it's finished, you can actually see a little bit of how that works out. So I'm going to do some highlighting here. Oops, not those two. And then we had this middle section. Actually, I don't want to highlight that yet, do I? So this is the same greens, and then this is the blues. So we have no idea what the totals for the greens and blues are. It's at least 45 because uh, blue includes a full 45 in it. Uh, but we have no idea what the total is. But we do know it's the exact same digits. So therefore, green and blue have the exact same total. 
So that's what's important, that the, the greens and blues have the exact same total. Now, uh, we can use this arrow technology here to delete some cells. Uh, we know that, again, green and blue have the exact same totals, and we know that for arrows, the um, tail of the arrow and the head of the arrow sum up to the same values. So again, if this was, you know, one, five, this would be a six. So if we remove the highlights from that, the think of it like a big algebra equation, the green cells lost six, but the blue cells also lost six. So now uh, the regions, whoops, the regions no longer have this exact same digits, but they do have the exact same totals. So that's what's important. And we can do that again for these. Um, whatever these tails, whatever digits are in these tails, that adds up to whatever's in the uh, the head of the arrow. We can do that here, here, and then also this other arrow. So now we've cleared out most of the digits, or sorry, most of the highlighting, uh, which is what I was hoping to do with these specific arrow setups. I, I came up with this pretty quickly once I decided on um, kind of the set theory that I wanted to go with because uh, let's just flip back over here real quick you could go with any um, any sort of rows or columns like you could do you know whatever weirdness you know strikes your fancy you could do something like this and uh, cut out those and I use the same colors but the vertical cells have the same digits as the horizontal cells and it's works just as well so I did a lot of messing around like okay what looks cool what you know what can I really make use of these arrows for like how like I knew about you know this trick with the arrows of um, being able to remove from both sets uh, the same value So like what what can I make good use of arrows for like this one you could do you know, maybe an arrow along here or an arrow along here. Uh, you can't do four cell arrows um, because, whoops, that would require one, two, three, and four to be along the, uh, at a minimum, to be along the tail of the arrow, which would put a 10 into this cell, uh, which obviously isn't possible. So the longest possible is three, at least as long as they don't see each other. So you could do something you know, super wild, like, uh, I don't even know, I'm trying to even see a good spot to do it, but like, oh, here you go, something like this, whoops, something, I'm not used to this interface very well, you could do something like this, these cells would be a minimum of six at one, two, three, um, and this one could be one, two, three as well, uh, and it would be just fine, um, and this could be seven, eight, or nine. But anyway, little tangent there. I messed around with a lot of different set theory ideas, put a lot of different arrows down, and eventually settled on uh, the one that we just talked about. And what's really cool about this one, I then uh, had these like two by two boxes, and then this kind of corner box. I didn't have this one, this 12 cage for a long time. Um, actually, let's... Yeah, I'll, well, let's talk about this for a second. Uh, so I had these cages, and the values didn't really matter. Uh, originally, they were going to be 14, um, but that actually doesn't work. Like, you can't have a puzzle in this configuration and have them have 14s. Uh, actually, just like this part of the puzzle is if you make this cage a 14, it'll break with only uh, this cage in this arrow, uh, which we'll get to in a little bit with, with the solve. But... Um, I didn't see that far ahead. <laughs> I didn't see that far ahead when I was uh, building the puzzle, and I was just, for whatever reason, I really liked the number fourteen as I was crafting the puzzle, and uh, it turns out it didn't work. But that was my first idea: was to have all three of these cages be fourteen. And now fourteen works really well, uh, which is why. I don't know if, I, if it's why I went with it or if it just like once I realized that it works really well and it kept going with it. So with these three cages is 14. That adds up to 42 total plus this little bit. 
So we'd have 42 total for the green cells, plus a little bit, and then we'd have 45 for the blue cells. Now you might ask how I know that this is 45, uh, since blue contains the digits one to nine exactly with no extras and no repeats, uh, because it's exactly one box. Uh, the digits one through nine add up to 45. So these cells all added it up to 42, which is what they still add up to, but I had to change the numbers around. Um, so this was 42 and this was 45. The difference between those was three or still is three. And that would imply that these two would have to be three. These two cells would have to add up to three in order to make the two sides of the, you know, big old algebra equation um, equal. And uh, I'm just gonna switch over to uh, this and rebuild a little bit. Um, I'm not good with using this smoothly. So as I said, whoops, that's not where the, I know my own puzzle. <laughs> for some reason there for a second, I was just like not sure where any of the things went. Come on, go up, go up. What is going on here? Okay. Making sure I didn't forget anything. Yeah, so this is all that's needed in order to force uh, these two cells here to be one and two. Uh, well, I guess also the values in here have to add up to 42 as well. Um, but the 14s didn't work, and I tried some different numbers, uh, but um, eventually settled on um, the 15, 17, and 10. Where's Killer Cage? I eventually settled on the 15, 17, and 10, but that was not my first um, guess or my first try for a long. I, I was operating under the assumption that I was going to have all the cages add up to 14 for quite a while. And I don't even actually know why, why I switched. It was probably because I realized it doesn't work. And I'll, I'll, I guess I can talk about that right now um, since it is helpful to the puzzle. So as with this box over here, every box adds up to 45. So we have a total of 45 for the, high, the dark green highlighted cells. And just, I guess I'll change the color so they're not two different greens on the puzzle. So for the dark blue, that adds up to 45. Now we know that this adds up to 15. Let's delete that. So this dark blue adds up to 30. And we can do this little, uh, this is where the name Caterpillar comes from, from the name of the puzzle. This dark blue can be shifted over here. And this is the thing that was uh, kind of the inspiration that Hurricane gave. Um, because you do the same thing here, you could kind of shift these values around using the caterpillars, and I really like that. Or using the, the arrows, I really like that. So this dark blue area is 30, and if you know kind of Killer Sudoku, you know that 30 and 4 cells can only be made in one way, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And it's also the maximum value you can make in 4 cells. So if I did 14 here, that would imply dark blue adds up to 31, which is impossible. So that's why 14 didn't work. I don't remember if that's why I switched off of 14, or maybe I just couldn't find any um, progress forward that also used 14 that I liked. But long story short, I ended up with uh, 15, 17, and um, 10 cages. Now this is where I was for a long time. I didn't know how I wanted to advance from here. I knew that this forced one and two, and that was kind of be gonna be kind of like the first step of the puzzle. But I didn't know how I wanted to use that. Uh, I tried a lot of, you know, arrows over here that would like point in, and then somehow use that. But that those always required more clues because while these two added up to uh, three. What, like all that means is that this number and this number have a difference of three so it's you know if we knew that was a five somehow we then we would know that this is an eight um but yeah I, we, I couldn't figure out a way that i liked that also didn't require a lot more clues um and there was another thing i don't remember the exact layout of the arrow but there was like a whole like 
I don't know, subgenre, I guess, of Arrow, something like this that just like broke the puzzle instantaneously. I don't remember why. I don't remember the exact layout of the area either, but it was something like this. It was just like, just this would break the puzzle, just no matter what the values for these were. Um, so I had to be very careful, and I eventually ended up with a uh, cage like this and made it a 12, um, which would force a 9 there. 3, or 12 minus 3 equals 9. Now it turns out that by doing this, and I, actually then I ended up also putting an arrow here my idea or my thinking was okay we would uh figure out this is one two therefore this is nine and um we would progress from there uh now unfortunately it turns out that um there's an easier way to figure this out and break this break into the puzzle and figure out this nine um using this caterpillar kind of i don't know trick that I was showing earlier so uh, I'll highlight like this the blue again is 30 we can do the little caterpillar shift there so now blue is 30 so this full column is 45 so now the 45 minus 30 is 15 again just the same value that was in the box and then we can do the caterpillar shift another time and shift down there. So this must be 15. Same as this box up here. And then 10 plus 15 equals, uh, sorry, yeah, 10 plus 15 equals 25, which means we have 20 left over up here. We can do the same shift. Um, how do I want to do this? I'll take off the blues. Uh, we can do the same shift on this side light pink is 17 so this light blue is what is that 28 and we can shift once again kind of crawling caterpillar then shift the uh, 17 down here to be like the remaining in the column and then shift down once again so now we have 17 here we have 12 here and that leaves so what do I want to do dark blue that leaves uh, 16 in the um, the dark blue area. So we have 20 in the kind of violet area. We have 20, wait, no, we have 20 in the, the violet area. We have 16 in the dark blue, and that leaves nine in the um, remaining in the row, since the full row, of course, adds up to 45. That leaves nine remaining, and since that full nine remaining is in an arrow, we know that this adds up to nine. This nine then forces the one, two. Um, so that means that you didn't have to figure out the set theory in order to go with it. And I actually like this a lot. I really like the arrow, um, I guess, caterpillaring, I guess, uh, that I did. And that's also kind of what you do in the hurricane puzzle. You uh, caterpillar these all around and eventually figure out that these center cells equal one. And then you go on a long journey from there, of course. Whoops, wrong way. Um you go on a long journey from there. So where was I? Uh, so this equals nine, and then we have here. Uh, and I was stuck here for a long time. I guess I'll leave these colors in for now. Uh, I was stuck here for a long time. Uh, I didn't know what to do next. Uh, for a long, for one solution I had was putting another cage like this, uh, kind of like what I did here with the arrow. Um, I guess I can just show what kind of what I did here. Basically, repeat what I did. This was a thing, but then I had no arrow down, so I wasn't sure what to do. And I didn't want arrows to cross each other like I didn't want arrows to cross each other like this. I think that would just get too confusing. Um, because yeah, you as a user or as a player or whatever wouldn't be able to tell uh, which arrow went in which direction. And I even don't really like when it arrows finish in the same cell either because it, it does make it a little bit not confusing since it's very obvious where the arrows end but it just doesn't look very pretty to me uh, so I don't really like doing that so I tried doing this a lot and then I then I also tried um, flipping it around so it'd be 
like this and I just couldn't really figure out a way that I really liked um, I put so early I put um, different cages down here and I couldn't find out a good orientation or whatever of a cage down here that goes along with this I didn't really want to use eventually yeah, I eventually realized I didn't really want to use the same trick three times um, with the, the inchworm so like the way that we kind of caterpillared down here and then caterpillared and kind of reoriented the different totals I didn't want to do that a third time unless I could do something different uh, I don't know if it counts as like the rules of three or the rule of threes where you're like the third time you do something in like movies or in video games or whatever you're supposed to like subvert expectations the third time I don't know if that's a real thing or not I'm not really into like film or game theory or stuff like that but I feel like that's a thing or maybe I just made it up I don't know but I didn't want to keep doing the same thing three times unless I uh, had some special way of doing it the third time and I didn't and I couldn't think of any you know sweet ways to like oh this is the third time you started the same but do it differently like I was at a loss I mean you actually can solve this quite a bit more here so this is a 20 effectively a 20 cage that the the violet um, and so one and two can't go in there um, it's it's important even when you're stuck like you don't have to wait to try to solve the puzzle until you're fully done you want to like each new element that you put in you want to solve and try to understand as much as possible before you start going to the next step at least that's the way that I I think works for me um, so we now have one two here we have a one two here that means in box nine we cannot have a one two across here at all so we must have one two six up here um, now we can look at this cell uh, theoretically these um, cells are three cells all in one column so they all see each other so we cannot have any repeats so uh, you know in a vacuum this could be six seven eight or nine um, but we have a nine here so this cannot actually be a nine and this one can't be a nine either and one thing uh, if you know a lot about arrows or not even a lot about arrows a little bit about arrows is that six seven eight and three cells always require a one um, there's the minimum if you don't require a one is two three four which sums to nine so no matter what these are going to have ones in them which means this cannot be a one and uh, we can shift that over there and this can't be a one either we just said this was a 20 cage um, so this is a three four or like a five I think that doesn't really matter actually yeah um, so we have where what am I doing next oh this six is that where I want to go yeah sure this six must be in here oh no I know what the next step is I've, I've, sorry it's, it's late and I haven't solved my puzzle in a couple of days because we have a two here we know that this two cannot be repeated along this arrow at all so it can't be six which requires one two three it can't be seven which requires one two four it must be eight and eight uh, could be one two five but it can also be one three four it cannot this one can't be a one so this is a three or four um, now we know this is 20 if so if this was a 3 that would require 8 and 9 here to be 17 17 plus 3 is 20 of course but it can't have an 8 we literally just placed the 8 so this must be 7 and 9 and 4 um, now we know that this light green is 15 just like this cage up here so that puts a 5 there and the remaining cells are 3 and 6 uh, this can't be a 1 we have the 1 2 6 over here uh, and there's also one two in the box I know there's a lot of reasons why it can't be why it can't be a one two or a six now six and seven uh, have the digit or either the digits one two and three for six or one two and four uh, if you and if you just try this a little bit you'll notice that this cell cannot be a one a two or a four so this cannot be a seven this must be a six and that puts one two and three here again this can't be a one or a two so this must must be a three um, 
Now, what did we say? This was a 16 total, the, the dark blue, which puts this as 13 and cannot have a 6, cannot have a 9, which means it must be 5, 8. Another way to look at that is what's remaining in the rows, only 5, 8. And 4, 7 is remaining there. Uh, and then we get a little bit more here, but not a ton. I think we put a 3 and a 5 over here. 8s and 9s down here somewhere. And then the 4 and 7s um, are the, the last remaining. So I was stuck here for a long time, and I couldn't figure out kind of what to do. Uh, but this was like, I, I kind of busted out this really quickly. By really quickly, I mean like two or three hours, I think. In like one evening, I, I figured this much out. Um, but everything I tried with, you know, another cage or uh, another s couple set of arrows, I, I just couldn't figure out. Um, and I might have still been using 14 at the time, actually. I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I guess another thing we can fill in, as I did say, you want to kind of figure out everything you can about um, the clues that you have already. Uh, these totals are locked in because we already have the rest of the column, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, but, but basically these arrows can be anything, so not too helpful yet. Uh, yeah, eventually I came up with having, I think it was like this, right? Yep. Like this, uh, putting another cage down. And the reason why I did it like this, there were uh, L's in two different directions, so I decided to put it in a third direction. That's really all the thought that I put into it. I decided on 14 because this is 10, so plus 2 is 12, plus, so plus 2 is 14. That's, again, the, the full kind of weight of my uh, imagination. <laughs> So uh, pretty quickly, this gets rid of the possibilities of an eight or nine, an eight or a nine here, uh, since we can't have a one or a two. Even an eight would require six more, which would require a one or a two to make. So the eight and nines are pushed out there. Four to seven, four or seven in the box. Uh, five can't go in there. Uh, five would require nine extra. So another five would be needed to match with the four which obviously is impossible because that would be two fives in the box and in the row and in the cage. So that's really not possible. Um, and that leaves a three. And then three, four, seven is just kind of, uh, you know, what, what's left. Whoops. With a three up here. Now, it is important to note here, and I, I was very conscious of this, this is very close to a deadly pattern. Uh, a deadly pattern is one that can't be resolved. Uh, with that, whoops, which can't be resolved without uh, another clue. So if like this was four seven and this was four seven, uh, there'd be no way to know which way is, is correct. Uh, it could be four four seven seven, or it could be seven seven four four, and both would be equally correct in the final solution. So you would need another clue uh, to resolve it um, in order to make the puzzle solution unique. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't run into that solution because I didn't or sorry, didn't run into that problem. Uh, because if I ran into that problem, then I need to add another clue down here somewhere just to resolve that one thing. Uh, and it would it, that would be hard to do. Like I could do a 642 arrow here, but then that would kind of like, I don't know, I feel like that would make it the puzzle easier as well. And I didn't want to do that. So I just wanted to, you know, as, as long as I could, try to make this cell a three because so if this is the, if this is the three of course this makes the deadly pattern I just talked about so like just do my best to make this the three um, so that we don't run into that issue because then with this we can have a four or seven whoops somewhere up here that resolves the whole situation um, so I was keeping that in mind I still didn't know what I wanted to do next again like this took uh, it's, it's, I don't know exactly when I came up with this, but it, it did take it like a series of like three evenings that I was kind of staring at this while watching like Netflix or watching YouTube or whatever, playing a game that would tab back over and like, okay, can I think of anything? And I just couldn't. Um, and I eventually came up with uh, this arrow right here. Uh, one thing that um, I forget 
person's name, unfortunately, that mentioned in uh, their puzzle setting video on Cracking the Cryptic is that kind of later, you know, late game, quote unquote, uh, clues, uh, you don't want late game clues to help the early game because if I, you know, if I put a clue in here that resolved all of this or resolved all of this, you don't, I wouldn't want to make it easier. So especially with arrows, if you cross boxes, you can, it, there's just so many different possibilities that it just makes it, you know, pretty trivial to, uh, to, to not help early game, but it helps a lot late game. And the way that, uh, the other setter, um, described it, if I recall correctly, is, uh, you have, you know, at this point in the puzzle, you have a lot of, uh, soft cells. What did he say? Soft? I don't know. You have a lot of like easy cells and hard cells. So like this cell, I already have a lot of information on. It's only a five or an eight. So I don't need a lot of information to, to like resolve this, but this cell up here or like these, a lot of these cells, like I have very little information on. So I, I want clues that give information on the, the, the strong cells, you know, strong and weak. That's what it was. The, the strong and weak cells. So you want to prioritize the clues, giving information on the strong cells. And then once the strong cells, you know, resolve through your clues, nine times out of 10, they're just going to end up resolving the, the weak cells anyway. Um, so anyway, I came up, did I not click arrow? So anyway, I came up with this arrow here and, uh, I liked this a lot because until you do the break in, you, you really have no information at all. But once you have this one, two here, the minimum here is three, four. So we have three, four plus something else that restricts this to eight and nine right away. Uh, and it, it turns out that it, re it restricts it like this. This could either be three, four, one, three, four, two, or three, five, one, and, and still be eight or nine. So there are th only three options left. So that, you know, obviously very uh, significantly, um, very significantly uh, reduces the options here and, and takes, you know, I knew nothing about it nothing about these two cells and very little about these two cells just that they couldn't be one two or nine um and restricted them greatly and if you notice or if you're looking i guess i don't know what to say that was a weird sentence anyway these two cells form a pair eight nine pair uh so i, I put on my thinking cap and i came up with this cage which i think is an 18 cage yeah an 18 cage and the uh, great thing about 18 cages is that uh, without an eight or nine, there's only one way to make 18. So again, this is, uh, if, you, if you don't have, if you haven't figured out this uh, clue yet, if you haven't figured out how this arrow works, this 18 cage really provides you very little. But once you figured out this cage, then all of a sudden, the only way to fill this cage is with a, a five, six, seven. It goes from like seven clues, or sorry, seven possibilities onto one possibility just instantaneously. So I really like that. Uh, and I actually use that basically same method again um, in, in a couple steps. At this point, I'm, I actually am working pretty quickly uh, with the setting. I mean, because uh, I've, yeah, I had the, like the, uh, the break in, but I couldn't figure out the next step. And now that I have this step, it, a lot of the stuff here simplifies um, pretty nicely. So these two are one, two, three, or four. That's just all that's left in the column. The eight and nines pair up as we just mentioned, and then the five, six, seven must be in there. So all that's left is the one, two, three, and four. Uh, so here's one more thing that I uh, didn't mention before, which I probably should have mentioned before. Uh, on this arrow, what happens if I put a six, seven, eight, or nine on this arrow. Now, obviously like a nine isn't possible because nine plus anything is gonna be make bigger than nine, but for the sake of the other cells, like what happens if I put a six on this, whoops, what happens if I put a six on this line? So this six rules out six from all of these cells. And this six, sorry, this cell also can't be a six because at a minimum, we put a one there. Now, all of a sudden we can't put a six anywhere in this column. 
Right. Six is ruled out from this whole column instantaneously by putting a six um, on this arrow. And same with seven, same with eight, and then nine, of course. Same with nine, but nine didn't work anyway. So six, seven, eight, and nine can't work in here. So we can rule those out immediately. Uh, and we could have done that much earlier, but it, there wasn't a whole lot of reason to do that. Although I probably should have shown it earlier. Anyway, the same situation goes here. If we put a five on this line, uh, it rules a five out of all these. And it rules a five out of this because even the minimum would put a six here. And uh, now there's nowhere to put a five. So we just ruled out a lot of values. Uh, one, two, three, four, seven. Okay, so we're here. That doesn't actually help you all that much. It, the, we did remove four digits, but it's still not all that helpful. Uh, but what is helpful is if you notice where can 6, 8, and 9 go in this row? Well, we just eliminated them from both of these. We just eliminated, or kind of earlier, we eliminated them from here. 6, 8, and 9 must go here. It's a hidden, whoops, it's a hidden triple. Uh, there's only three, I think, I think hidden triple is the right phrase at least. 6, 8, and 9 were the only options for those cells, or, or rather, those three cells are the only options for 6, 8, and 9. Therefore, 6, 8, and 9 must be in those cells. Now we look back at this row and like, okay, now we just kind of simplified things. So where can 7 go and 5? Turn, oops, turns out 7 and 5 are now restricted to these arrows, which, you know, makes things a lot more simple, I guess. Uh, suddenly, this must be, whoops, this must be 7, 1, or 2. Um, 7 plus 1 for an 8, or 7 plus 2 for a 9. No other options are possible. Now, this actually forms a triple uh, of 1, 2, and 7. This can no longer be a 1 or 2. These can no longer have a 1 or 2. So now we have 5 with a 3, or 5 with a 4. Again, this is 8 or 9. Uh, so now, what was I about to say? Oh yes, now we have this 3-4 pair over here. That 3-4 pair rules 3-4 rules out of here. We have a 1-2 pair. Uh, so I, I employed basically the same tactic as I used here. I put in a killer cage that with 1 and 2 as options is very open. But once you no longer have 1 and 2 as options, um, it's very restricted. Oh, whoops, that was 15, not 14. Uh, so there are th three options for this, um, which I should have. I should have remember to write those down before this thing. So let me just go to, I use godoku.com. It's just uh, one of the first results that pop up when you do, uh, when you Google um, killer Sudoku cage cages and it just gives you like all the possibilities. So for 15, in three cells without a one or a two, there are only three options. You can do three, four, eight, and I'll just type these out right here. Um, three, four, eight, three, five, seven, or four, five, six. And just remember for the moment that these are uh, the combinations for the 15 cage, not um, pencil marks saying what is in the cell. So if this is three, four, eight, it breaks for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, 3, 4 would break this cell. If you put 3, 4, 8 in here, then nothing could go in here. Also, it uh, conflicts with this 14 cage down here. Uh, 3, 4 here would mean that both of these would have to be a 7. So 3, 4, 8 is out. What about 3, 5, 7? Um, it also breaks down here. Uh, 3 and 7 here would put 4 and 4 here. I think there was another reason why this one broke but I don't recall offhand why, what the second reason was that it broke. So that leaves one cell remaining, the four, five, or one combination remaining, the four, five, six, which uh, as I was coming up with this, I remembered what I had thought about earlier, how I wanted to force the four here and wanted to force the three here so that we would avoid the deadly pattern. And this accomplishes that it took, I, did, I mean, I didn't come up with this right away. It's not like I 
just me going through this and you might think oh this guy uh you know somehow instantaneously had you know vision and foresight to put a 15 cage there and realizing realize that that would solve all his problems no this was like an hour or two probably more of like trying different cages probably tried a cage like this at some point um trying different arrows and eventually came up with hey putting a 15 cage here actually works very nicely whoops put those backwards so this 456 resolves this very nicely um very happy with that this also becomes a three which then comes over here this can only be a three so this must be a nine this must be an eight um actually one thing i just kind of forgot about there um this was a six or uh six eight and nine triple this can't be eight or nine so it must be the six so these can't be sixes and then this three four becomes a three because of the four down here or the four in the cage these can only be three so this is a nine this is an eight this is an eight this is a nine get rid of all these eights and nines uh what's the next step uh this six also goes there must go there um i believe that this is forced to be a seven but i don't recall why offhand <laughs> it doesn't really matter uh i think it's by filling in the possibilities here um one really nice thing if you're setting on uh this is fpuzzles.com by eric fox uh you can do this solve here and you can do steps and actually i don't want to do that but like you can check things and I, can, oh, I probably should not have done that but you can do solution count and it'll pop up and tell you how many um, different uh, possibilities there are for solutions I really shouldn't have done that this is gonna not be, even be able to hear my fan going um, I don't want to exit the page uh, yeah 29 solutions so there's actually I'm coming down home stretch here you obviously just want one possible solution but 29 isn't isn't really that far from uh isn't really that far from uh having just one solution it's it's really just like two maybe three good clues in order to uh resolve everything um let's see what else do we have oh this can't be a six so this must be a six this is a seven eight or nine feel like the, oh oh yeah this is i was like i was like i know there was another step here before the next clue but i didn't remember what it was yeah the, but when we found out that this was an eight um it forced this to be one seven rather than possibly the two seven the ones force a two here force a one here and resolve a few things but most importantly having the two here uh, there was only one possibility here that involved a two here and that was three four uh plus the two equaling nine it's like I, <laughs> it, it has been a couple days since i've uh, really looked at this puzzle but it's, <laughs> it's like i was looking at the puzzles like i know there was some way to resolve these eight nines how do i do that yeah there is a I guess there was a few steps back um so now that we can actually place the one in this box uh this forms an x wings an x wing on ones which um blocks ones from being in any of these highlighted cells uh just just so you can kind of see how that works um the one in the final solution will either be one either be a one here and one here or vice versa which kind of forms an x uh which no matter which way it is it blocks all those ones but if uh, that doesn't convince you we can just try to see what happens if we put a one over here that'll force a two here and a one here force a three here and another one there uh, it'll force both ones to the bottom which is obviously bad so ones can't be in here can't be there and this one down here says it can't be there um let's see what else do we have we can just fill in some possibilities real quick nine two eight and th i think that's three four yeah this three four pair then comes over and sees this one three over here so this must be a one which is going to resolve uh quite a bit uh because this three then points over at the 
uh, three, four pairs over here. Whoops, what did I just do? Okay, get rid of that six. I think I hit like new tab or something, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I think that's where we're at at the moment. So I was trying to think of uh, what I could do. And, and Oh, here's, yeah, this must be a seven because this middle box was five, seven, and nine, which makes this the one, makes this the seven. And this an eight, and this a five, and this a two, and this one. So here we have kind of two areas. We have this area here, um, and then we have this area here. Uh, and I didn't want to use two clues. I kind of wanted to just do one clue. But uh, the issue was that, and I kind of talked about this before, I didn't want um, arrows to cross each other. And I kind of felt like I was going to need an arrow that would go from down here to up here or vice versa. So like something like this, which would resolve, you know, everything up here as well as everything down there. And I couldn't figure out quite how to do that uh, because I didn't want to have an arrow across that. And also with the killer cages, I couldn't figure out what to do with the killer cages either. Um, yeah, there's just, I kind of have a, whoops, undo. I kind of have a wall here of arrows that I couldn't cross. Um, I guess I could go, I could have gone up here somehow, but yeah, I wasn't really happy like 936 I don't think would have been enough to resolve everything up here um, but if you like if I if I wrote out every single possibility here the uh, this was basically all pairs up here and I think this is forced to be a nine if I recall correctly and or maybe this is forced to be a one actually this is forced this is a one yeah this is a what is this a two three nine um, so if, if we could do something over here and then kind of round the corner, we could solve everything. But no matter what I tried, it wouldn't quite work. And actually there was a uh, another deadly pattern. I don't remember exactly how it went, but it was like the five, six, seven, five, seven, and then like something else right here, uh, I think, that was like a five or six, seven or something like that, uh, that... Um, wouldn't resolve with anything else I tried. Uh, I think I had like an arrow, like I had, um, obviously I had this arrow in the final, but I think I had some arrow like this or whatever that would uh, give more information than I wanted it to, but it would also kind of resolve almost everything. I think it was something like this, maybe, I don't remember. Um, and it would resolve almost everything except for that uh, deadly pattern that I just talked about. It was something like this. I don't remember exactly what it was, but um, so I had to be careful that I actually maybe involved this four or five up here. Maybe it was like this. I don't remember exactly, but it was, it was something along these lines. It doesn't, the specifics, I guess, don't really matter. I might've been like a, f I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, so eventually trying a bunch of different things and um, keeping in mind that I didn't want arrows to uh, go over each other. I couldn't find a, just like a single arrow that resolved everything. So I eventually came up with this arrow here, uh, which um, I believe the reason why I did that was that it forced this to not be a nine and, uh, oh yeah, this can't be a nine. Yeah, this can't be a nine because of this nine here. So if I say this can't be a nine, then kind of the same situation is down here. We can have a clue here, then kind of bleed in and resolve all of this because this, this whole thing is just pairs all the way, uh, all the way along. So if we just get like one more piece of information, we can solve it all. So I put this clue in here to force the nine over to the left to allow for that. And this clue is very minimally helpful. Like I could have put the seven nine in, you know, very, very early, but uh, it wouldn't matter. Like knowing that this is a seven or a nine or that, 
you know, nothing else in this row is a seven or a nine doesn't particularly help, uh, which is exactly what you want out of Clue, in my opinion, for a late game Clue, uh, as opposed to like an early game Clue to help help them along. Um, and then the other arrow that I figured out was, I believe, this one. Uh, I tried a lot of different things, I think. I, like, I think I tried, let me undo these so I don't confuse you too much. I think I tried something like this for a while, but that didn't resolve everything. Uh, and obviously, the, my eyes were drawn over here because I didn't have any arrows in this box. Everywhere else has arrows, so this was just a natural place to look. Um, in terms of where to place an arrow, and even putting an arrow up here wouldn't necessarily resolve everything. Uh, like, if I said that these were both sixes, for example, that would resolve everything up here, but it wouldn't necessarily round the corner and then bleed out into here like I needed to. Whereas, kind of the, the opposite, if I resolved something, if, if I resolved this whole area, it would, nine times out of ten, uh, bleed up into the um, the top area. So these were all very high clues, or the eights and nines were all over here, and we had low clues here and middle clues here, which kind of just made it a natural um, place. Like, hey, a low clue plus a medium clue is probably going to be a high clue. Uh, so that's helpful, but also like earlier on, until we knew that these were low, medium, and high clues, that doesn't really help all that much. I mean, there are a lot of different arrows we could do here. Um, and even this one doesn't necessarily fully resolve instantaneously. But uh, like 2-7 could go to with a 9, or 2-6 could go with the 9, or could go with the 8. Uh, you know, 4-5, four, 4-5 five, four, five here. There, there's just a lot of different arrows that we could try. Like something like this to the 7 and 2, or as I said, you know, this way originally. There's a lot of different options. Even something like this uh, could work, although, as I said, I don't even really like when the arrows touch at their ends um, in just a one-off situation. There are a lot of pretty puzzles that have uh, like a lot of arrows that collide or connect in certain ways that are really pretty, but just having a one-off like that I didn't want to do. I eventually settled on this, which I believe resolves the rest of the puzzle. Let me make sure that I have this. So we can just, it, it does resolve the puzzle a little bit faster than I wanted it to. So if we, oh yeah, I'm just using this because it, it makes it much faster. Uh, but basically every single time I click this, it's going to be a naked single. Um, we can go back to where I put this. So we can talk about some of the um, logic, I suppose. This can't be a seven. Uh, this can't be a six. Oh, this nine up here uh, forces this to be a seven, seven, nine. This is a five, then this must be a six, then this must be a seven, which forces the nine, yeah. Uh, and none of the rest of the solve is very interesting, so I'm just going to step through it here. And you can see basically every time, every step is going to be a uh, hidden or a naked single. Uh, which is a naked single when there's just one possibility left in the cell. And you can see every other cell in the grid is just a naked single. So I kind of wish that the last, like, what is this, 30-ish clues were not naked singles. Um, but besides that, I'm very happy with it. And even as it stands, there's a lot of steps to this puzzle. Um, one commenter did say that, that there were, that he'd like, I think it was he, I don't remember there. I don't remember who it was, actually. They said that they uh, liked this, a lot of the logic, um, and uh, but that there were, there were a lot of steps to the puzzle. So I guess it's probably not terrible that the um, last like 30 clues or something were all, or maybe not, I don't know, the last big set of clues were all naked singles. Um, but there were a lot of, there's a lot of interesting logic. I'm still very happy with the opening here with the kind of caterpillars crawling down here to rearrange themselves and then um, I really like how it turns out that you can't have the six seven eight or nine on this on these arrows which you know forces a seven here that was 
I didn't find that myself, by the way. I found that by um, doing the solve, like, partway through, just doing that step, and eventually it was like, put, it put a 7 in there. I was like, what the heck? How the heck did it <laughs> realize that there was a 7 right there? And then I, like, looked at every single step. I was like, oh, wow, that's actually really cool. Um, and I'm happy with these these uh, killer cages. I really like these killer cages in this era. Um I'm not a huge fan of this one cell arrow or this two cell arrow, but I really like this kind of mid game, um, these mid game clues that really like resolved a lot of stuff and set up the ending. Because uh, this, like 18, is you know just slightly above average. 15 is right on average uh, for three cells, so they're like really unhelpful until until you have gotten to the point in the puzzle that I wanted you to get before you saw them. Um, and I'm not, as I said, I think at the very beginning, I'm not some brilliant solver or setter or anything. Uh, I don't know if I could even solve this puzzle. Like if, if I hadn't made this puzzle, I don't know if I could solve it. Uh, so you don't have to be a super great solver. You just have to, you know, take your time and, uh, kind of mess with clues, see how the clues interact with each other there's a you know this as i said this handy solving feature over here you can put in a couple clues and then just see what happens when you hit solve 10 times and or like step 10 times and see what interesting bits of logic pop out uh because uh yeah there's a there's gonna be a lot of stuff that you unless you're like a really top setter or really top solver there's gonna be a lot of stuff that uh, you probably don't even realize is happening. Anyway, this video has ended up being over an hour, and I was thinking that this was going to be like a 20-minute video. <laughs> my voice and my throat are about to die, I think. Uh, I haven't talked this much just straight on in quite a while. Even my, like, I do speedrunning a lot. Even my speedruns, I don't talk this just this constantly. Um, anyway, so uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully that was interesting. Hopefully I explained it fairly well. Uh, some of that logic in there is a little bit confusing. And um, yeah, I know I'm not the best necessarily at exp explaining myself. But hopefully I got a lot of the ideas across. And hopefully you enjoyed my puzzle. Or at least the video explaining how to s solve and set the puzzle. So I will see you guys next time with maybe another Sudoku video. Or maybe a State of Decay 2 video. I don't know. It depends on if inspiration strikes for me for Sudoku. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.